Hello, we are going to talk about excess reactant now. So I did a quick limiting reactant for you. Uh, there's a video on this, you can watch that. If you want to pause this video and look at this, you can. Um, I want to go over it with you really, really fast because you have to do limiting reactant first before you can do excess reactant. Uh, so here's how we begin. Uh, we have carbon monoxide reacting with hydrogen gas and it's going to produce what's called methanol. We have 356 grams of carbon monoxide and uh, 65 grams of the hydrogen. So here's the question. Which one is going to be completely consumed and which one will have something left over? Now the one that's completely consumed, that is the limiting reactant, and the one that's left over, that's going to be your excess reactant. Um, think about cooking in the kitchen. We are going to make, let's say, ooh, chocolate chip cookies, okay? Um, and I decide that I want to double the recipe, but I'm not sure if I have enough of everything. So I go into my pantry and I know that I need um, to double the recipe. I need six cups of sugar and four eggs. Everything else I know for sure I have enough of, but I'm not sure about um, the six cups of sugar and the four eggs. Boy, that would be a lot of sugar. Those are going to be sweet cookies. Um, so I go into the pantry and oh, do you know what? The sugar, I've only got four cups of sugar instead of six cups. The eggs, I'm great. I have enough eggs, okay? Um, in fact, I not only have enough eggs, I have more than enough. Instead of four eggs, I have, let's say, eight eggs. So if you're tracking with me, I don't have enough sugar, but I have extra eggs. The limiting reactant there would be the sugar. I can only make as enough cookies, um, as many cookies as I have sugar. So maybe I could only do one batch of cookies. The eggs though, I'll use some eggs, but then I have eggs that are left over that I can use for later. That would be the excess, that would be the excess. So do limiting reactant first. Which one of these reactants will be consumed first? Like the sugar that's going to be consumed first when we make our cookies. Um, so this is how I prefer to do it. I'm going to compare both of the reactants to that product and do a stoichiometry. Um, we're going to go from the 356 grams of carbon monoxide, bring that to moles, walk the bridge, use the molar ratio, one mole of CO produces one mole of methanol, bring the methanol back to grams using molar mass, and that tells me if I use all 356 grams of carbon monoxide, it's going to produce 407 grams of methanol. Great. Now we're going to do that for hydrogen. If I use all the hydrogen, how much methanol will it produce? Now remember with stoichiometry, you're going from one compound to another one, and the key is using the molar ratio to walk from that one compound to get the answer for the second compound. So let's look at the hydrogen. You've got the 65 grams of hydrogen. I'm going to use molar mass to bring that to moles because I have to use the molar ratio, walk the bridge from one compound to another one. Two moles of hydrogen produce one mole of the methanol, and then I want to know that in grams. So um, use molar mass of methanol, one mole of methanol is 32.05 grams. Ooh, that will produce 516 grams of methanol. All right, now you look at it. Whichever number is smaller is going to come from the limiting reactant, just like the sugar. I only had four cups of sugar. I could only make one batch of cookies. Um, which one's smaller? This one right here. You can't make any more than the smallest amount. I can't make any more cookies than the ingredient that runs out first. So this right here, 407 is smaller than 516. That's the maximum that I can make. And that count came from the carbon monoxide. So I write down above that reactant LR, limiting reactant. That's the one that's going to be consumed. Okay, that whole thought process is crucial to finding excess reactant. We're going to completely consume carbon monoxide, which means by default, we are going to have some leftover excess hydrogen. Now the question is how much? How much of that will be left? So at this point, we are going to do another stoichiometric relationship. We're going to compare carbon monoxide. I'm going to use all of that. I say, well, if I use all of that CO, how much of the hydrogen do I need? So let's do that. We'll begin with the 356 grams of the carbon monoxide. Now I'm going to go from one compound to another one to walk that bridge. I have to use the molar ratio, so I bring this to moles. 
use the um, molar mass from the periodic table, one carbon plus one oxygen. It's going to give us 28.01 grams of carbon dioxide. Notice I put the grams on the bottom so they cancel. And that, will, um, that is in one mole of carbon monoxide. Now, grams cancel. If I stopped right there, I'd have moles of carbon uh, monoxide. I want to get to hydrogen. So let's get rid of our moles of CO. That's going to go on the denominator side so it cancels out. And then we're going to put the moles of the hydrogen in the numerator. That's what I want. Now you just look at those coefficients. One mole of CO is going to react with two moles of hydrogen. If I um, stop right there, I notice that the moles of CO cancel. I would end with moles of hydrogen. But we want to know mass. We want to know um, mass in grams. So let's use molar mass of hydrogen. Let's put moles of hydrogen in the denominator so that cancels grams of hydrogen. One mole is 2.02, just 1.01 times 2 from the periodic table. That cancels. And putting this in our calculator, 356 divided by 28.01 times 2 times 2.02 gives us 51.3 grams of hydrogen. Okay, now here's my question for you. What does that number mean? Sometimes we'll undo all this math and get an answer and we lose the forest from the trees. What is that number? If we use all 356 grams of carbon monoxide, we will consume, we will use 51.3 grams of hydrogen. So that's how much we'll, we'll use, how much we need. The question you'll be asked though, is how much is left over? What sits there unused? So for this really easy subtraction, you're going to take the initial amount, which was 65 grams, and simply subtract the amount used. So the used amount was 51.3 grams, and that will give you the excess amount. So if we subtract this, we are going to have 13.7 grams of hydrogen in excess. There you have it. Now, I do want to take just a second to write down a recipe list of steps. So when you're trying to find excess reactant, number one, you have to find the limiting reactant. Limiting reactant, and that's what I labeled as LR. Find the limiting reactant, which means you can then identify the excess reactant. Okay, number two, you're going to use stoichiometry. Um, so I'll just put stoich to find the X, um, let's see, the amount used. Let's put the amount used um, of the excess reactant. Sorry, writing around that number. So first you find the limiting reactant, which tells you by default what's the excess reactant. Once you've done that, okay, you did all of this purple, found the limiting reactant identify the excess reactant, then you do this stoic to see, well, how much do you use of that excess reactant? We found the 51.3. The last step, number three, is simply that subtraction. Take what you began with, subtract what you used, and that's what's left over. That's going to be your excess amount. Take a second to digest that, and then practice one on your own following these steps. You can do it, you'll be great. As you work it, make it make sense in your head. Good work.